Hello everybody, welcome back to Work Right Planner. My name is Erica and here I share my unique perspective on planning and budgeting while documenting my personal journey to pay off six figures worth of debt. I spent nearly two decades supporting two kids on my own on a single income and it's taught me a lot and I'd like to share that with you. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you all along for my journey. I know I've gained several subscribers in the last little bit and I appreciate all of you so, so much. I'm so glad that you're with me. So in the name of transparency in 2022, I am determined to show you all of the steps of my budgeting process and what has helped me um, over time learn to stay on top of my money, even though there's not a lot to go around. So um, if this is too much, please tell me and I'll scale it back. I have a five step process for being on top of my budget. So um, be sure to watch until the end and I'm gonna share with you my magic bullet for making sure that everything is correct. Okay, so step one in my process actually occurs all month long and that is keeping a transaction log. This is vital. I used to keep them in the little check register books but I like this so much better because it's easier to find and it's month by month instead of you know those things could span several months easy and then you're looking for them if you ever need to find something whereas this one i know is january of 2022 so um i do come in here i visit the budget once a week and i write down all of my transactions make sure that my balances are where they need to be um, what comes out of the cash envelopes if i actually paid cash for it it's not listed here but if I happen to pay for it out of here, then I put the money from my cash envelope back into the account to offset the amount. Anyway, this happens all month long. It's so, so important. Uh, every payment, every deposit, all the way through. And I do know the categories and I will also write down any confirmation numbers for bills that I pay because I have on occasion had to break that out and prove that I had actually already paid something. Who'd have thought? On to step number two, and that is to find any sort of color coding system that you want to use. Some people will write these things down in certain colors. I don't really do that. Um, I do use a highlighter method, and I bought these mild liners off of Amazon um, because a lot of the budgeting community said that they were awesome and I do like them so much better than the really neon colors um, and it gives me more opportunity to um, have more categories but what I do is on my transaction log and on my budget I will uh, and not necessarily the same color every month. I just kind of rotate. As you notice, um, some of these, the mild liner side is up and some of them, the back side is up. And that's because that's as far as I got. So I will start with this one when I go into this budget. So I'll just pull this out. And to give you an example of how I roll here, um, all of these are going to be single transactions in here. So, and so will Netflix, so will Hulu, so will Sirius. So I'm going to look for groceries. And of course, my groceries come out of a different account. Um, and I can't show you that one, but I will, um, highlight that one and what I count as the amount toward my actual budget and whether or not my budget was where it needs to be is whatever my percentage was of the amount that was supposed to go into groceries whatever we spent I take my percentage out of that and put that here as the actual so I will actually hold on to this color for a moment on this color we're going to do 
gas. And I have been paying for gas out of my account. So I see gas here. I apologize, everybody. The camera wasn't on. I am so sorry. Okay, so what I have found is um, this never came out. So I can... I haven't totaled these yet, but these are what I spent in the differences in each category. Um, I have gone ahead and totaled this up. My total income for the month was $2,690.54. Um, I've written in a lot of categories, but down here I didn't have enough room for where all of my money ended up going. So I've written some on this post-it note that's going to be on here, and I was just about to tally everything up to compare and see how the month went. So we have, I had a surplus in income compared to what I budgeted of $542.54. Okay. I underspent by $76 in my fixed expenses. Thumbs up. Okay. My sticker keeps coming up because I've actually moved these a couple of times and now the, the sticky on the back doesn't want to stay. Got negative 151. I'm just double checking my math here, that's right. 151, so that's correct. And then down here. So that'd be right. Okay, so to determine whether this was a good month or a bad month, what I do is I take all of the numbers and add them together. So 542.54 plus we have 76 negative 151 plus negative 443. So I'm still to the positive $24.54. This tells me that I stayed within the money that I had. Two thumbs up. Yay! I don't remember whether or not I said, but you know, after you highlight, you tally the totals for each area, Step four is to write those numbers on the main budget under the actual column. And then step five is to compare your income and expenses, which is what we just did to get that $24.54 um, to see how the month went. Okay, so my magic bullet for making sure that everything is correct in my budget is reconciling my bank account. I know that some people don't want to do this, but it is vital to making sure you have not missed anything. So what I've done is I've printed off here my bank statement and I've blacked out all of the personally identifying information that is on here. Um, and we're just gonna kinda go through it. And because this is January, I have to have December's transaction log and the January one. So 
let's get to this. Okay, so I like to use different colored pens from month to month to mark mine off. That way I know it's just easier to see and it's not going to be blue unless I've had to void something out. So we're going to skip over this top part because that is my savings account and we're going to go straight for the checking. We're looking for 27041. Right there, and we'll check that one off here. $30.50. And we'll just go right down through here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this as quickly as I can. Okay, occasionally I find things that come through that I did not write down, like this 2235, and I don't have it anywhere. So check number 2235, I'm writing this in my green pen. It came through on 1-5, it is $25. I'm hoping I didn't inadvertently send two payments to Murray State. I'm really hoping not. I'll have to look up on the bank and see what that check was written for. So I'm gonna hold on to that. I'm gonna take check 2235 minus $25 out of my little spreadsheet there that goes into my purse. So we can go ahead and check that off and keep moving. have finished with this month as far as reconciling everything that has come through and I'm into January so I mark a line down through there to let myself know just as a visual cue I have reconciled that whole page we are done with 2021's budget book now that this is done because everything has come through the bank now keep moving okay i have checked off everything that has come through the bank so at this point what i do is i take this last number down here and i'm going to subtract anything that came out and add any deposits that did not clear the bank. So anything that doesn't have a check mark. And hopefully I come out to whatever my number is here, which I need to calculate real quick. $2,805.70, which means that I balance as of January. So I always put myself a check mark and write the month in so that I know as of that point I match. So if at any point my bank stuff doesn't match, I know that it has been since this statement and anything that is not in green, it hasn't come through as of that date. Does that make sense? Okay, so I did catch one thing. I need to check with the bank to see where that came out at or where that was written to so that I can take it off of my budget or my, um, my little tracker sheet here. Um, but yeah, it, it never fails that I've forgotten something. 
So I highly recommend that. It will make sure that all of your numbers are right. My next video will be my February budget with me where we'll be talking about if and how these numbers affected my February budget. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, if you're still in the mood to watch, YouTube has put the best match for you on the screen, and I will see you all next time. Have a great couple of days, everybody.